Hey, what's up, guys? It's Arlie, and I'm here with another reaction video, and we are checking out Pursuit of Wonders, the future of selling and being sold, and the age of the internet. I find this interesting because I do make money online, and I just want to see what what he would say about this whole new age of easy. Well, I wouldn't say easy money, but just being able to make money um, so easily now in terms of being an entrepreneur I wouldn't say it's easy money but you can now make money very fast if you work pretty hard and um, if you accept entrepreneurship so it's crazy it's fair to say that being sold to is for the most part annoying modern sales and advertising is akin to that of a pestering child constantly following us around and trying to get us to do things for it as annoying as this child might be, however, its character appears to be necessary in our modern consumer-driven world. Business owners need ways of communicating their goods and services to consumers, and consumers need ways of learning about and deciding what goods and services to purchase. Arguably, the problem is not necessarily that we are being sold to, but what we are often being sold, and perhaps how. More specifically, the tendency for businesses and advertising to sell us things that we don't truly want or need, paired with their ability to often convince us that we do. Rewind several hundred years to the late 17th century. Consumerism, as we know it, takes form in various countries of Europe. During and following this time, a shifting in economic behaviors would begin to unfold, where individuals would no longer buy and sell items strictly around immediate needs, like food, simple clothing items, tools, bowls and cups, and so on, but rather goods that were focused around the desire for luxury or additional less necessary comforts. Things like tobacco, tea, fashionable clothing, fancy wigs, crafted furniture, high-end silverware, and so on. Fast forward to the 19th century. As a result of increasing consumer markets, advertising is developed more formally and utilized as a major economic force. Generally, during this time, advertising would provide consumers with basic information about a product or service in order to attend to the consumer's better judgments of as low beautifully summarized better on things. In other words, as a result of increasing consumer economic force, generally, during this time, <laughs> this Coca-Cola ad says, whenever you're hot, tired, or thirsty, work, play, or weather, hot brain tired or <laughs> body weary parched dry or just plain thirsty think of it think of and drink coca-cola it is delightfully cooling and refreshing relieves fatigue of the body brain nerves quenches the thirst not just wet and sweet but vigorously satisfying they used to put cocaine in their coke Advertising would provide consumers with basic information about a product or service in order to attend to the consumer's better judgments of rational decision making. Fast forward another hundred years or so to the 20th century. Specifically, in America, advertising would begin to study and use methods of human psychology. With this, advertising would no longer be driven by the features or information of a product, but more by the feelings, narratives, and ideals that could be created and associated with the product. In other words, a soda advertisement would no longer sell soda, but the ideal of happiness. An alcohol ad wouldn't sell alcohol, but the ideal of charisma or fun. A car ad wouldn't sell a car, but the ideal of social status, and so on. Ever since, this strategy has remained mostly the standard for all of modern marketing. Renowned American linguist, philosopher, and cognitive scientist Noam Chomsky has been a longtime researcher and critic of the role of modern consumerism and advertising. One specifically notable idea, and the one that we will primarily be focusing on here, is his view that in the modern world, rather than assisting in higher, more complex needs, most businesses and advertising work to create and perpetuate useless and frivolous needs. For Chomsky, commerce focuses almost exclusively on the trivial and superficial. Things like vanity, pleasure, indulgence, self-distraction, and so on. In this, more g- Oh, dang. Hold on. ...useless and frivolous needs. For Chomsky, commerce focuses almost exclusively on the trivial and superficial. Things like vanity, pleasure, indulgence, self-distraction, and so on. Dang, he In just described Commerce focuses almost exclusively- Hear what he just said. 
exclusively on the trivial and superficial. Things like vanity, pleasure, indulgence, self-distraction, and so on. In this, more genuine and higher level human needs like good mental and physical health, creative expression, a sense of community, and opportunity for self-realization are neglected. For a better understanding of this concept, it is helpful to reference the distinguished Russian psychologist Abraham Maslow and his research and theory on the nature of human needs. Maslow beautifully summarized his theory on the spectrum of human needs with a simple visual diagram of a pyramid popularly known as Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Within this diagram, there are five levels. Starting from the bottom, at a physiological level, we require obvious things like food and water. Moving up to the next level, we need safety and security. However, beyond these two levels, Maslow suggested that we would begin to enter into higher and more psychological levels of needs. First, a sense of belongingness and social connection, then a sense of esteem or respect, and finally, at the top of it all, a term that Maslow coined as self-actualization. In other terms, this essentially describes the fulfillment of oneself and their full potential of skills and abilities. This idea, along with the diagram as a whole, coincides rather succinctly with the suggestions of Chomsky. Like Maslow, Chomsky suggests that we require things that attend to the full hierarchy of our needs, the top being a sense of creative self-fulfillment. However, the problem for both Maslow and Chomsky is found in the fact that most businesses and products neglect the higher levels of human needs and focus far more on our unconscious base layers. Because people, I think, want a dignity and a sense of self-worth and a sense of cre creating and doing something important. That's what we are. And I think it's taken huge efforts, enormous efforts. A uh, huge part of the economy is devoted to trying to drive these things out of people's heads to make you think that all you want is more commodities. So you should go shopping instead of reading. Principally, this makes perfect sense as it is far easier and more accessible to attend to the more unconscious and evocable desires and thus more profitable. However, easy does not mean helpful or right. For Noam, Maslow, and many others, the consequence of neglecting the higher levels of human needs results in a void of happiness, value, and purpose for all involved. An optimism supposed by the likes of many great thinkers is that capitalism can, with proper time and effort, move up into the higher layers of human needs on a mass scale, sustaining the value that consumerism has on a society while not solely focusing on the sale of trivial and superficial things. In a new age of an internet and attention-based economy, we perhaps have the access and potential to satisfy this goal unlike ever before. With worldwide, real-time social communication, sharing, and perspective, we can understand genuine value and see through contrived value far more easily. With the internet, the ability to sell or distribute directly to the consumer is open to essentially anyone and everyone. In theory, this now means that the individual can more easily sell, create, and share things that perhaps wouldn't otherwise be successful at a corporate or mass retail level, but own the complete process and margin of a product's profit, and thus, even at a smaller scale, still make a good living. When utilized, this allows creators of products, services, and artistic projects to maintain creative control and subsequently provide a more self-honest reflection of value to consumers. Moreover, Chomsky suggests that engaging in creative work under one's own volition is an imperative and fundamental part of our nature. One's work is sort of the core of one. I agree. I think this whole video shows you how bad um, internet consumption can be. Holy crap. One's existence. You want to be involved in creative, honest uh, work uh, in association with others, but voluntary association and not under external control which is to say that after a certain point of satisfying one's lower needs, the act of working and creating within the realm of one's own creative interest is in fact one of, if not the highest reward of working. When you have an opportunity to do creative work under your own control, with especially if it has some social purpose and so on, you know, it's the best thing to do. It's a lot better than 
you know, lying on a couch and uh, watching a boring television program. By this account, as opposed to the vast majority of purchasable products that we often see as the reward of working, a much greater and higher level reward is somewhat paradoxically found in the experience of working itself, a carrying out of our full potential through work we deem meaningful and valuable. Again, as a result of the internet, this is arguably available now more than any other time in recent history. There are very clear signs of this shift towards more meaningful and higher level direct-to-consumer business and creative independence taking place right now. For example, the use of social media platforms to share education, art, and meaningful entertainment from individual creators. Apps and websites that are greatly helpful in dealing with mental health, physical health, self-education, and skill development that would perhaps otherwise not be very accessible or lucrative. There are individuals making and distributing films, shows, literature, music, and so on, entirely independent and direct to an audience with no corporate influence that might otherwise strip the creative project of all its nuance in order to appeal to the widest possible audience. The internet, of course, also has the potential to be used in the opposite capacity. That's true. So the internet has created a lot of independence, not only creative, but even monetary independence. Think about it, before social media, before YouTube, before Instagram, before Vine, before all these social media platforms, before we had to kind of rely on maybe going to a job or going to school or maybe being lucky to create a big business like Walmart, but not everyone's going to do that. What the internet has done is opened up the possibility of being able to be not only independent and creatively independent but um, also being able to have more money than I mean I know it's created a lot of a lot more millionaires and families that otherwise wouldn't have been um, millionaires if it wasn't for the internet things have definitely changed think about it the internet didn't was not developed and released to the public Amazon probably wouldn't exist e-commerce wouldn't be as big it's crazy man like um, I think people take the internet for granted, for sure. Selling more of the same to more people through easier and more intrusively manipulative advertising. There are huge groups of people, information, and markets around this endeavor of using internet platforms and methods to exploit the lower levels of our desires more easily and more lucratively. Like any cultural phenomenon, the internet has the ability to compound the good and the bad within our nature. Regardless of who we are, as individuals either selling or being sold to, perhaps we don't need more of the same. Perhaps we don't need to use the internet to sell cheap products in more clever ways. And perhaps we don't need to figure out how to exploit social medias to persist the same cycle of cat and mouse between business and consumer. Rather, we far more likely need a shifting of focus towards creating things that are perhaps hard to make but more meaningful to sell and buy. There is certainly a difficult amount of self-honesty and introspection required in figuring out where the line is truly drawn in terms of what we want in this life and how much. Furthermore, there is a certain amount of respectable discipline also required in holding ourselves accountable to it. However, in this pursuit, there is great dignity, meaning, and character to be found and sustained. There is great opportunity to make room for our higher selves. Regardless of how or where we work and make our money, we should remember the fragility, shortness, and deeply challenging conditions of this life and make it our number one priority to at the very least not make it any harder or more convoluted for ourselves and others. The world doesn't need us to make the world any harder than it already is. Rather, the world needs us pursuing our highest potential, resisting anything that might try to take us from it, and trying our best to say and do things that are honest and meaningful and that might help others do the same. The internet is not and does not need to be the single means in which we strive towards this. For many, it is not accessible or of interest. However, arguably in all areas of work and creativity, the same principle applies. The point in regards to the internet is simply to illuminate how its recent historical development provides a potentially more accessible method. Admittedly, all of the aforementioned is much easier said than done. Given the current conditions of the world, Unfortunately, not everyone is given fair opportunity and many face grave challenges and limitations. Furthermore, even in the best of circumstances, finding success in anything personally and socially meaningful is extremely difficult. 
temptations, and distractions hover above us at all times, and those who might find disdain in any of the ideas shared thus far, of whom will likely continue to exploit consumers' temptations, who will persist in this world on the same course, for good or for bad, out of intention or unawareness. Realistically, we can't expect that the nature of corporations and the powers that be will change all that much in the near future. Nor can we expect that business and advertisers will always operate with the consumer as a human being in mind. However, we can recognize this truth and try to consume with a corresponding skepticism while also working our hardest to find and share our highest self in spite of it all. Regardless of how hard or far off, all worthwhile goals and ideas reside in the realm of grave challenge, just far enough out of reach to seem unlikely, but just close enough to be possible. At the risk of overly ambitious optimism, perhaps if properly leveraged by time, culture, and the internet, there's a future where this can be a little bit easier. A future where the things we are sold are a little bit more helpful, the way we are sold them a little less annoying, and life in general is a little bit better. like definitely one of the um best like channels i've watched <laughs> subscribe to pursuit of wonder um and thank you so much for checking out my channel and uh peace